Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm glad to see all of you today. Welcome. We're glad you're here on this holiday weekend. Is it raining out? No, kind of. Okay. Well, it won't mess up your plans too bad. I'm just so glad to see you. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord and celebrate our freedom and uh, liberty that we so enjoy. Our ushers are coming down and they're going to bring the attendance pads. And thanks for filling that information out and providing that for us. Just let us know who's here. We appreciate that. Pass that down and then pass it back. Make sure you know everyone on your row. That's great if you'll do that. Mike, you have a little trouble with that this morning. <laughs> anyway, while you're doing that, I want to call to your attention announcements that are in your bulletin. A couple of things there and a couple of things not there. Our youth have just left for Lake Junaluska, and uh, they've got quite a trip ahead of them, but uh, it's going to be a great week, and we want to remember them in our thoughts and our prayers as they head off uh, today uh, and, uh, and, and experience a great retreat uh, this week, and we, uh, we pray for them as they go. I just wanted to call your attention to all the activities that are happening here. Don't forget, Bible School's coming up. Uh, Triple L got a great trip coming. And, of course, another super uh, event in our Chautauqua series. A lot of you were here last Sunday night. We had a great, great concert last Sunday night here. And uh, we look forward to the other events later this summer. I want to take just a moment to thank all of you for your uh, support over the last couple of weeks. Our church has experienced a couple of uh, tragedy or tragic deaths and the loss of Jim Drake and Ashley McClure. But you have stepped up and you have helped in so many ways. And, uh, and I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, a couple of people that I want to mention, uh, Patrick Jacobs and P.K. Compton and Greg Ramey have been working behind the scenes, doing some very special work so that we could have uh, lots of uh, options for the family as they had their worship services here. And uh, we certainly want to continue to lift those families as they grieve. And, uh, and uh, we, we thank you. For, for your love and care. Friends, let's stand now and let's greet one another. Now, friends, let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord.
Let us stand as we continue to worship, as we read responsively our call to worship found in your bulletin. <clears throat> Praise be to God who has freed us from oppression. Praise, Praise be to God, God who has healed our wounded souls. Let our hearts rejoice at God's redeeming love. Let our voices raise in thanksgiving for all that God is doing for us. Come. Let us worship the Lord with our whole hearts. May our praise and voices resound with joy. Amen. Please turn in your hymnal as we lift our voices in praise and joy to 698.
seated. As we go to God in prayer today, we give thanks for the freedom and the liberty that we enjoy. None of you was oppressed to get here or be here, and we give thanks for that. We pray, though, for so many around the globe who don't have that and who uh, are even hiding while they worship this day. We think about our world. We think about so many in our lives that have need and so let's uh, unite our hearts and go to the Lord now in prayer. Mighty and loving God, today we gather in this place and lift our hearts, even our voices, in praise. We thank you for the opportunity we have to gather today and give thanks. To praise your holy name for all the many blessings that you've poured out upon us. We are humbled in your presence. And we give thanks that on this day we might take a few moments just to connect closer to you. And to feel the presence of your spirit among us. We thank you, Lord, for our church and the opportunities given to us to be the church around the globe. And as we worship here, we pray. We pray for so many that are touched by sickness and hurting. We know, God, that through Christ, your healing is possible among all. And we claim that healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who grieve. And we acknowledge, O oh God, that you are the one who fills the void in our lives. You're the one who comforts us. But we thank you that we can be encouragers to one another in times of great need. Loving and holy God, as we pray today, we thank you for the church. We thank you for its leaders. And we pray, Holy Lord, that you will give us that sense of vision and mission an urgency to get up and move and be what you have created us to be. That's the freedom you give us. And so today, we pray for ourselves. We pray for churches around the globe. We pray for leaders here and around the world. Let us, O oh God, seek your peace. Abide in us, O oh Lord, as we abide in you. As we now join our hearts and our voices and we pray together the prayer you taught your own disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand once again. Turn in your hymnal to number 696, and let's sing verses 1 and 3 of America the Beautiful. Let's stand and sing.
seated. Let us pray. Mighty and holy God, as the word is revealed, we pray that your presence would fill this place and remind us of all that you have said through the Holy Spirit. Now may the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. For our scripture today, I'd invite you to hear Paul's letter to the church in Galatia. In the fifth chapter, and I want to read the first verse, and then I'm going to move down to the 13th verse and following. Verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. And then in verse 13 and following. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor. Very good. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say. And do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, as I warned you before, those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Generosity, you all are singing it, aren't you? I can see it on your faces. <laughs> Generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against such things. And the, those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we believe not by the, if we, excuse me, if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. That's the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, happy Independence Day to all of you. You know, most of us probably don't think a lot about independence. Don't think much about our freedom or our liberty. And sometimes we even find it difficult to describe what that freedom really means. I would dare say, as many of you are here, we would have that many definitions if I ask you, what is freedom? We're really, we're ready, I think, in life to accept freedom from things. But we have a hard time accepting freedom to things. Two sides to freedom, freedom from, freedom to. There are those who suggest that we have freedom from things, which means that we're free to do anything we want to do. No boundaries, no laws, no responsibilities, no accountability. The late Paul Harvey told a wonderful story about an older man who was a great admirer of democracy and public education. He had a great dream to bring those two things together in the creation of a new public college where students would govern themselves. There'd be no rules or regulations. The goodwill and the judgment of the students would run the college. The school opened, and the older man was overjoyed. But as time went on, the students proved again and again and again that they were not models of goodness and discipline and good judgment. They skipped class. They drank to excess. They wasted hours on frivolous pursuits. And then one night, Fourteen students disguised themselves with masks 
And they got drunk as skunks. And they went on a rampage that ended in a brutal brawl. One student hit a professor in the head with a brick. Another student nearly beat his classmate to death. And in response, the college's trustees met in a special meeting. And the older man, now 82 or so, was very frail. And he, asked to, he was asked to address the student body. And in his remarks, he recalled the lofty principles upon which the, the college had been founded. He said he had expected more, much more, from the students. He even confessed that this was the most painful event in his life. And suddenly he just stopped speaking. Tears welled up in his failing eyes, and he was so overcome with grief he had to sit down, <coughs> unable to go on. The audience was so touched at the conclusion of the meeting that the 14 offenders stepped forward to admit their guilt. Of course, it was, they couldn't undo the damage that had already been done. A strict code of conduct and numerous regulations were instituted at the college, and now the college, then the college went on to become one of the great universities of America. But at that moment, that older man felt heart sick. His experiment didn't go the way he planned. Why? Well, because he, didn't, he, because he took for granted the one essential ingredient necessary for any democracy's success, and that is the virtue and goodness of the people. Those young students were not spiritually mature enough to realize that only a good and virtuous people can actually secure and maintain their freedom. It was just a short time later, on the 4th of July, that the old man died. And engraved on his tombstone, you can go and see it even today, are these simple words. Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence and father of the University of Virginia. Freedom brings with it responsibility and accountability. And the idea of freedom has even affected, friends, our understanding about what it means to be free people of God. And that's the issue that Paul was addressing in the scripture that I read to you this morning as he addresses the church at Galatia. There, some Christians in that day thought that they were free, free from coercion, threats, and the punishment of the law. And they threw out the law altogether. No limits, no boundaries. They said, hey, we can li live like pagans now and do so as we please. They never even considered what they were free to do in Christ. The problem in the Galatian church, friends, was that certain Jewish Christians were telling the Gentile Christians that their right standing before God depended on them keeping the law. They had to live up to this rule or that rule. And as a result, they were trying to gain God's favor by doing uh, works, and by observing certain rituals and ceremonies in addition to having Christ as their Savior. Paul says, now, wait a minute. No, no. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Now, that may sound a little bit odd, kind of odd wording, if you will. But in that ancient wor world, they understood it well. It was talking about, actually, the freeing of slaves in Jesus' day. And to be set free for freedom, it was understood as being set free for God. <clears throat> and for that to happen, a slave was to save up. Imagine that. A save up enough money and then give that to the slave master. And the master would hand it over to the temple or a church treasury. And the slave would go with the, with the master and they would hand it over, and a, a document would then be written up containing the words for freedom. The local church would then take that money and give it back to the slave master, and no one then could lay claim against that slave. 
In fact, on the walls of many of the churches in that day were words something like, for freedom, God has purchased such and such slave, and no one could ever enslave that person again because he or she was now property of God. Hmm. What does that mean for you and me today? Let me share two real quick things. One, we now have freedom not to sin and live like the world. We have freedom to do that. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Live as free men or women, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up cover for evil. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 9, Be careful that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. And if you read on, in verse 13 there, in the message, listen to this. It says, Rather... Use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. Get it? The second thing is, we're free to be. Free to be who God created us to be. People made in the image of God, reflecting God's glory to others in what we say and what we do. I mean, what good is it to be set free if we want to live our lives or still live our lives like slaves? Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light and my yoke is easy. You see, the Apostle Paul understood the work of Christ as liberating. It was something that set us free. And through faith in Christ, friends, we're able to, to move to a more mature relationship with God than we ever thought was possible. You know, when Christians love and they serve one another, it's fulfilling the law. And we don't have to worry. Don't have to worry about trying to live up to some legalistic rule or trying to so hard to please God that we live miserable lives. That's not the Christian faith. Under the good news of the gospel, friends, we are brought into a state of liberty where we are freed from the curse of the law so that we no longer are under bondage. But we owe that liberty to Christ because it was Christ who made us free. You read in the book of Revelation, right at the very beginning in chapter 1, verse 5, it says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sin by his blood. My family, God's loving transformation in our life makes us want to serve him for what he's done and to serve others. And do that by serving others. The story is told of a preacher's son who loved comic books. Anyway, he became so obsessed that he started stealing them. And the pastor tried on three different occasions to use the law to get him to stop stealing these comic books. The first time, the father found them stuffed in his dresser drawer, and they were all stamped with the local library stamp. M Matthew, his son, had been checking them out and checking them out and never took any back. So he marched him down to the library with all of these comic books, and the tall, stern-looking librarian explained the law to Matthew. But he still didn't stop stealing comic books. The next time, he went to the corner drugstore where his family was on vacation in another state, and he smuggled them back to his hometown and there into his bedroom. And his dad, the preacher, found them. And he lectured the young boy about, Thou shalt not steal. And the preacher gathered up all the comic books, and he lit a fire in the fireplace and built a roaring fire. You think that fire reminded Matthew of a hot place? <laughs> no. And the third time, when his parents found more comic books, friends, they were beside themselves. And the preacher finally resorted to spanking Matthew. But Matthew again showed no remorse. Would he ever change? In his despair and his frustration, his dad, the pastor, he left the boy's room. 
and he cried. Years later, Matthew and his mom were on a drive. And they were having one of those conversations. Remember when? And suddenly Matthew mentioned the time when he had been stealing comic books, noting that he had stopped. <laughs> but he followed that with the question, do you know why I stopped? And his mother replied, well, sure. Dad spanked the living tire out of you. <laughs> No, said Matthew, it was because Dad cried. My friends, the truth is the law, the law can shame you, it can blame you, it can restrain you, but it can't change you. It cannot give you that freedom. Only God's love and Jesus Christ can actually do that. And so today, in this time when we're thinking about our nation's freedom, when we gather around this table and receive this holy meal, my friends, we're reminded that it is Christ, only Christ, that changes us and changes us from the inside out and truly gives us the freedom we enjoy. Let us pray. Mighty God, you are the one who sets us free. And we pray that we would come to a new realization in that and discover, O oh God, as we give our hearts over to you, that you are the one who loves us and desires a relationship with us and creates the, the avenue, the way, through Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Lord. Come into us now and let us experience true freedom. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. My friends, as we uh, respond to the word, I want to invite you to turn in your hymnal to page 8 for the confession and pardon. As you do that, I want to remind you that Christ, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let's stand. And let's confess our sin before God and one another. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we've not loved our neighbors. And we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My family, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are all forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's offer a sign of peace and reconciliation to our neighbor. Friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward, so let's prepare ourselves to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Our freedom. Help us remember the ways we're holding back. We're, we're, keeping, we're keeping our emotions intact. We're keeping our love from sharing. We're keeping our money. 
to ourselves, but God, help us feel free. Help us freely give of our time, talents, gifts, service, and witness to you through this church and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen.
As we share in the great thanksgiving today, I want to invite you to turn your hymnals to page 17 for the responses. And uh, Jack, would you uh, mind assisting me today? And uh, Vivian and Tanya, would you help? And let's join together for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, singing... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he uh, broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and again he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this as often as you wish in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 My friends, as we gather in this place today, I want to remind you that our faith teaches us that Christ has died for all. There are no exceptions. If you're a guest with us today, you're welcome, encouraged to come to this table. After we've served everyone, if you cannot come to this place, we will come to you. The invitation is simple, friends. Come. We'll ask the choir to come first, and the ushers will give you guidance. But hear that invitation. Come.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you, O oh God, for giving and receiving. Thank you for this time that we can be together in your presence and acknowledge your abundant love. Thank you for this gift, this sacrament, the price that you paid with your all for this, for us. We are humbled and we give you thanks. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let me invite you to stand and get your hymnals. And let's turn to page number 431 and sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Mighty and loving God, let this peace begin. Start right here, right now. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Let it abide in us forevermore. And we give you thanks. Amen. God bless you and greet your neighbors before you go.